get started talking about uh, in-house recruitment tonight. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a background on how I got started as an in-house recruiter, many, many years ago, and I won't say how many years, but many years ago, uh, my director at the time, I was working in an, in an HR department, in, as she said, in Children's uh, of Dayton, Ohio. And my director came to me and said, we really need you to start looking at this idea, this tells you how long ago this was, of in-house recruitment. We're seeing that you know we're paying a, an outside firm anywhere from eighteen thousand dollars to twenty-five thousand dollars for each position that we're recruiting. So we want to look at bringing this in house and see if we can maybe save us some money. And I said that'd be great. So where do I get started? And he had, happened to have a, a wonderful little sheet in his hand, and it was a training conference that was called Boot Camp. And it was a, a week-long training that basically I went and learned how to become an in-house recruiter. Um, after I came back, it was not very long at all that we got started. And ever since then, we've, we've done all in-house recruitment. Um, and it's, I say that like I'm still at Children's Dayton, but uh, they're still continuing to do in-house recruitment. And it's been very successful. I thought that it would be helpful uh, to just chat with you a little bit, you're nodding your head, to tell you the difference between an in-house recruiter and a firm recruiter. In-house recruiters or staff recruiters, to make it a little easier if you think of us as a part of the medical staff, um, we are paid by a salary. And the salary comes most often, you'll hear the name of a hospital. So if you ask me, where do you work? I work for the Hospital Corporation of America, and we actually have 163 hospitals, so it makes it a little different. But most in-house recruiters are going to say, I work for Dayton Children's Hospital, I work for um, Spectrum, I work for, you know, it's, it's always going to be a hospital system. Uh, we look at finding the best fit for the hospital or the group that we're recruiting for. And that's a very important factor to us because we are going to be maintaining, we're on staff, we're working with those physicians. We want that to be a long-term relationship and have that be a very successful relationship for us. We work according only to community needs. So in other words, we only recruit for something that we actually have available in the community. Very rarely are you gonna get an in-house recruiter who wants to talk to you about a Navy position. Um, every once in a while, I'll get a physician who will call me in. If they're a pediatric rheumatologist, as an example, which are very short supply, I might say, well, I don't have one open, but that's something that our hospital may be willing to look at because they're so hard to find. But for the most part, we're only going to be working from something that we, we do a study on, a community needs um, analysis. Our primary goal in recruitment is to maintain our positions, to re retain our positions, uh, and keep them as long as possible as on our medical staff. We are members of something called ASPR, and that's Association of Staff Physician Recruiters. By contrast, an outside firm is going to be a commission-based, uh, so they're going to be commission-based. They're going to get a fee for finding you. Um, sometimes they're known as headhunters, um, and that's because they get a fee for finding, I guess, for finding your head. Uh, they are employed by a firm rather than the hospital, so when you would ask them what's the name of the company that you work for, it's going to be something with uh, search or um, a, usually like a double name. Merritt Hawkins is something that will be very familiar to you, or uh, Martin Fletcher as an example. They were, are only going to work with a hospital who will pay a fee to them for you, for you as a candidate. Um, they're not going to be, so a lot of times that's going to mean that they're going to be recruiting for hospitals, a position that's very difficult to recruit. Um, you're going to very rarely find a position maybe in Denver, Colorado that needs to use an outside firm as an example. They are members of a organization called NAPR, or National Association for Physician Recruiters. I thought also that it would be helpful for you to know just a little bit about what we're doing on our end to try to find physician candidates and what a little bit of a, what a day in our life looks like. And I say life, but it's, it's a continual thing. 
So sourcing or finding candidates is is the first and probably one of the very most important because if we don't do that, we don't find you. But that is going to involve um, any number of things. For one, being at a conference like this, hoping to meet physicians and find people who are looking for jobs. Um, we do email blasts. So if, you've, if you're getting lots of email blasts from recruiters, uh, hopefully you are. Um, we do ads, we do uh, said conferences, we do all kinds of things to try to go out and find candidates. Um, the next step after we finally hook someone, we get, you know, in your email box and you think this sounds like a great opportunity for you and lo and behold we get an email back that says you're interested in talking to us about the opportunity just as much as we're interested in talking to you. So we call you and we do something that we call like a phone screen or a phone interview. At that time, we're going to talk to you a little bit, try to get to know you, review your CV, and just kind of go through things and see as much as we can whether you're going to be a fit with the opportunity that we hopefully that we have for you. If that goes well, then we're going to go to a background check. And, and for different, um, different hospitals, different recruiters, that involves different things. For me, initially, that involves um, what I just call a preliminary check. And it's mostly just things that I can check on the internet at this point in time. Um, others might hire a company at that point to do a, a much more detailed background check on you. After that, we're going to present you as a candidate to whatever team we're working with. So that could be anything from, if it's a practice, it could be the team consisting of the practice manager and the head of the practice and all the attending physicians in that practice. If we're employing you at the hospital, then it's probably going to be um, a team of administrators, the CEO, uh, the physicians that you'd be working with the same. So we always, the team varies, but we always have a team. If that goes well, and the team really likes you, then we're going to move on to the next thing, which is scheduling an interview for you to come in for a visit. Um, and that makes it sound very easy, but as you probably realize, if you're trying to schedule an interview with a physician and you get trying to get on everyone's calendars and make it a good time for that physician at the same time, that can be a very tricky. So number six is always always can be a really tricky thing. And then you, we, we go from there into traveling arrangements. So we're looking at airline tickets and hotel arrangements and if we need to rent a car for you then we rent a car or we make arrangements for us to pick you up and take you where you need to go. So that's another uh, kind of detailed thing. But nothing compares to the itinerary. I have a couple of in-house recruiters uh, in the audience and, and they are at least nodding and the itinerary is probably the trickiest part <laughs> and the most frustrating part of any physician visit that I've ever had. We, uh, it, it's, I used to compare it to a really finely uh, put together jigsaw puzzle because you start out and you think it's great and I always used to get scared when the first round of phone calls that I made went really well and it would be, you know, this is great, this is working out because the next day almost all of those people would call you back and say, I know I told you Dr. Murphy could meet with that candidate at two. That's not going to work. Actually, he's not going to be able to work with them at all, so you're going to have to put him in with Dr. S and so it would just go back and forth and back and forth. And this would go on usually, including up until the day sometimes, because you're doctors and you end up going, you have to go to surgery or you have to go, you know, on a call somewhere. So everything is always fluid and we just used to always use the term it's very dynamic. It's always going to change. Just get used to it. So finally then we're looking at a tour since sometimes that's something that we would do or it's something that we arrange. We used to have a, um, rather than have a realtor the first time that our candidates would come in, we had a great person who would take them on a tour of the community without taking them and, and showing them the most expensive homes in the area and you know, scaring them away from our opportunities. Um, so that's, that's another detailed part of the uh, interview process for us. Then finally, if that all works out, um, we, we go through, we ask for, fan, for feedback both from our candidate and also from the team just to see how everything went on both sides. Hopefully it was wonderful and it, it works out and they want the candidate and the candidate wants us. 
if that happens, then we're talking now about a second visit. And basically, we're repeating everything that we did before, only this time we're including the spouse and sometimes the children, and it's a lot more complicated than it was the first time around. Then we get into contract time, and that usually only takes like a day, and we're done. It's, it's just never any kind of a, a hassle at all for us with contracting, and everybody's just going... It, it takes a long time to get the contract um, in hand. It's, it's as you can imagine, it's a back and forth process between the candidate and us, and it takes quite some time. Um, we also get involved, once you've signed on the dotted line, we get involved in credentialing. We help you uh, with the licensing for the state, any other kind of license that you might need in your practice. Um, we help with house hunting and connect you with realtors. And then we get involved with your relocation. Um, I've done, I can't tell you how many times I've been on the phone with, after, even after a physician had purchased a home with a realtor and saying, okay, they really aren't happy about this. <laughs> so it's, it's amazing some of the things that we end up getting involved with. Um, orientation for the physician is usually a part of our, at least our responsibility to make sure that it's taking place. And then finally, we also sometimes dabble a little bit into practice setup, getting things and making sure that you have all of the things that you need to start day one. Finally, at the end of all that, the physician sees a patient and we're thrilled to death until we get the next call that another physician from the practice is retiring and it's time to start all over again. I, I thought it would be good to give you a little bit of um, tips as far as working with us as physician recruiters. Um, physicians sometimes get a, a different view of what the expectations are and they confuse the gray line. The first point that I want to make is that we are here to work very closely with you and our greatest desire is that you succeed. We want to see you succeed. We want to see you come in and be a part of our organization. But you always need to remember to keep it in the back of your mind that also, that's why I made the second point, that's not a typo, we are a part of the hospital team. So sometimes we, I've had physicians who sort of said things that I think, oh, you know, that's just not going to work with our, and it breaks my heart because, you know, you have to remember you are talking to someone who's part of that great big team. I want them to succeed. I want you to succeed. So um, there, you have to remember that it's sort of a two-sided coin. Um, and finally, hospital recruiters have very wide networks. I have a couple of colleagues here from our organization, I'll talk about it just a little bit, called CHURN. We all know each other, so it's our greatest desire to help you find a position. If you can't find a position with us, if I don't have anything for you in any of the 20 states that I'm recruiting for, I love to be able to pass you on to one of my colleagues so that you don't incur, well, they don't incur a fee from you know, an outside firm. Tips for you, I mean, I'll, being polite and professional is, is obvious, <laughs> hopefully, but I will say that, you know, it kind of leads me into the second tip that a lot of times lately I'm getting calls from physicians and I'll, you know, answer the phone, Kathy Kyer, and they'll say, this is Dr. Brown, what's the salary on that job in Las Vegas? And it's, it's, it's a very much, you know, right from the very beginning, as much as I'd like to say, well, Dr. Brown, the salary is $500,000 and when would you like to start? It, it's, it sets a bad tone for the, you know, if that's the only thing, and I've always prided myself on, I get to work with great people, I get to work with pediatricians and pediatric subspecialists, and it's very rare that a pediatrician or a pediatric subspecialist's number one thing is salary. So that this has become a little bit of a trend is surprising for me. Um, so I, I just kind of like to mention that, even though I'm sure nobody here will do that, it's, it's something that I'm seeing more and more often. Um, when you're looking at your CV, when you're thinking about writing and, and getting it ready, um, proofread it, spell check it, have somebody else do it for you also. A second pair of eyes is always good. Talked to a young woman today and she handed me her CV and she, I said, this is a great CV. It was one page and she said, you know, my program director said, well, you really have to put some more stuff on this. There's just not enough stuff. You don't have enough stuff. And I said, trust me. You've got everything that you need on here, and, and to pad it, or especially when you're first coming out of training, and um, you know, I had someone the other day that had a CV that had, she was a sports medicine physician, had every game that she had worked, 
and it just it was just an, an unneeded second page. So make sure it's just pertinent information that you're adding. Um, prepare your time for phone interviews. I have so many times that I'll be talking to a physician and I'm fearful for their life because they're driving down the highway as they're talking and I say, please, can't we talk later when you have a minute? Um, so just, just make sure that you have time and it's, you know, there's no distractions for you. Leave good voicemails. Uh, spell check. Uh, spell check, I'm sorry. Spell your name when you uh, leave your, your name on there. There's so many times that I'll just barely catch it. I have to listen to it three or four times. Sometimes still don't get it. Or the number is said so quickly that I don't understand what it is. So that's just something I think. Have an elevator pitch about yourself. Does everybody know that it's kind of a trendy term, elevator pitch? Five minutes in an elevator, so you have you know that just little bit of time to introduce yourself and give yourself maybe two or three minutes to say you know this is who I am. Have that little bundle of something when you go in because you're going to have well, if you go in for an and have an itinerary of a number of people, you're going to have 25 times that day that you have to give the same speech over and over. So you want to know you know what what do I say with with each one of these people. Finally, be yourself, but you be your best self. I've had physicians who've come in post-call. I truly, true story, had one fall asleep during an interview. So just make sure that you're you're well rested, you're prepared for the interview, that you know you take the time to really be ready. Finally, I want to tell you about a great uh, group, an organization that we have called CHURN. CHURN stands for Children's Hospitals In-House Recruiters Network. And what that basically means is, as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of children's hospitals out there, and many, many, many of us have a lot of years of experience, and we all know each other very well. So if you call one of us a lot of times, don't ever hesitate to say, you know, do you have colleagues? Because, you know, I'm really, you might call and, and for instance, I advertise national opportunities. Well, I, it is national, it's nationwide, but I have 20 states only. So I might not have an opportunity for Michigan or, or for Arkansas. So I will say, well, I don't have an opportunity there where your grandmother lives, but let me let you talk to my friend Diana or my friend Melissa and, and get you uh, talking to the right people in that community. The average number of years of experience for the churn recruiters is anywhere from 18 to 20, and there's about 40 of us. So really and truly, we're a good resource, and we're happy to do anything we can to help you, even if you're not looking to come to our org to our particular organization. You want tips about you know how to go and interview and all, any of those kinds of things. We're always happy to do anything like that. 